what's up soul squad for today's video i'm just gonna do a draw my life so i know this video is kind of long but i just wanted to give you guys a full like rundown of my story and maybe you'll understand some things that have came about in my channel and i hope you guys enjoy it My story began on January 7th, 1991. So I'm currently 27 years old. I am a middle child and I had one older sister when I was born which was seven years older than me. And then later on I ended up having another sister which is seven years younger than me. So I am literally right in the middle of my two sisters so I guess I'm the prime example of a middle child <laughs> my dad also wanted to name us all with names starting with the letter S because that was what his name started with and that was just his little trend so as far as my childhood goes I had a really good childhood the only thing that I wasn't happy about in my childhood was my dad would do jobs that required him to be away from home a lot of times so he would go off and be gone for long periods of time and I'd only get to see him sometimes on the weekend or every other weekend until the summer so when the summer came around we would get to join him and go and travel with him and go stay wherever he was working so I was a happy camper then and then also my childhood that's when I started my beauty pageants which I find hilarious because I was winning these beauty pageants and then when I would come back I would go and join all the fishing tournaments and win those as well so I was not very liked in the terms of the boy crowd because they didn't like to be beat by a girl but I won every fishing tournament I was ever in as long as the beauty pageants as well so everybody just kind of thought that was quite hilarious that I would go win these beauty pageants and come back and also win the fishing tournaments which is all because of my dad because he was an avid fisherman and he made sure to pass along those good traits to his daughters as well now when middle school came along I had a great time in middle school probably one of the best experiences um, that I can remember as far as school wise being school age because that's when I discovered my love for sports. I played basketball and then I played volleyball. In basketball I was a point guard and then I played volleyball and also I did track which I ran the 400 and did the 2x4 relay and the 4x4 relay. As long as um, everybody else was there I wouldn't have to do both at one time but a lot of times I would so I was killed because I also did the 100 so yes that was a very a good experience for me because I was also doing cheerleading which was fun and then I had so many friends that I just was a very happy kid at least in middle school because everything seemed to be going well. I had my sports, my friends, I befriended everybody, so I was friends with every single group there was in school. You know how there's those cliques, so when it came to cliques, I was friends with each and every one of them, because that's just the way I am. I still do that to this day. I'm friends with people of all different um, aspects of life and different thought processes. High school was a completely different story. I have some of my worst experiences as far as memory wise in high school. Um, first off, I had a really bad injury, so that meant no more sports. So after about half of freshman year, I was benched and was waiting for surgery, which I never had. I was supposed to get that surgery when I was 18 and never did. but. Um, it was my fault because I had an extensive knee injury and instead of setting out my track meet, I ran it anyway and ended up in physical therapy for over a year and a half. And I didn't get to play sports anymore in my high school career. My friends all started to change. Their, 
there was a problem with me being friends with all the different cliques because they all started not getting along and you can't really hang out with mixed people because all these people had different thought processes going their own ways and it was just a really tough time and the biggest issue I had was with the teacher that led me to quit school because I had a really terrible experience with a particular teacher that led me to quit and the school's response was basically oh straight A students don't quit school but they do whenever they have serious issues like that and there's nothing you know no resources to help them but anyway I ended up fighting the school to get my GED because they were withholding the ability for me to get my GED due to not being able to graduate until your class graduates so here I am 16 and I'm fighting the school along with the community college they were helping me to um, be able to obtain my GED considering the circumstances in which I left the school and the Board of Education also failed to help me so this community college helped me get my GED at 16 years old which I was more than thrilled and then after that after they seen my grades and my abilities we changed along with changing the NC law so that all students can get their GED um, as long as they are 16 or older, they don't have to wait until the class graduates anymore because of this. But they also went on to pay for me to go and obtain my CNA license, which that was a huge opportunity for me because here I am, 16, just got my GE and um, planning to start a career in the health field. So I go and get my CNA license and I think this is going to be such a huge thing for me and I was so excited because I just love helping people and talking to people and it ended up being one of the really worst experiences I can think of because it ruined the entire healthcare aspect for me considering that I got so so attached to these residents and you know most of them are ill or in there just because they're feeble and unable to provide for themselves and it just broke my heart seeing how many of them didn't even have their family visit or they wouldn't even, you know, last very long and I was there. So I'd get so attached and then I would lose them and that just was not a good time for me. Um, and on top of all of this, I made the biggest mistake of my life. And that was marrying my high school best friend that I thought was... Perfect. And it ended up being the worst mistake of my life. It didn't take long to realize that this person that I thought was my best friend was a monster. And it's a very scary time in life because you think you have things figured out, you're young. See, I was 18 when I married him and I didn't know anything. I was ready to give up. I had made plans to give up. And that's when I was sent my son on September 22nd, 2010, and he literally saved my life. So he's literally my hero, and he always will be. He's, I don't know, he literally saved my life. I just can't go into detail on that. He's so good. But in 2009 is when the paranormal entered my life because, um, I was out walking and we ran into the shadow figure that I told you guys about. And although I've had some paranormal experiences in my life, I didn't really know how to explain them, you know. I thought, well, maybe there's a logical explanation when you think back to all the things that happened to you were a kid and you're like, okay, maybe that was paranormal. The business experience that I knew was not of this world. It was something unknown to most. And I wanted to discover it. I wanted to find out what it was, even though it was terrifying, but that's how PAC came along. So PAC Paranormal was here and looking for answers to help us understand things along with hopefully being able to share our knowledge that we obtain with others in the future. Now there became another incident because after I left the healthcare field, I began managing a convenience store, which was a really good job. I really enjoyed it. Um, most of the employees were good and friendly, and some of them were really fun to work with. 
but one of them took a spell or she did something and when she got caught she slipped out and eventually had the whole entire town after me and I can't emphasize this enough that my life is literally crazy. It is like a movie, but if you guys want a story time of any of these little pieces I'm sharing with you, just let me know. I'll share anything with you guys because you guys mean so much to me. But yeah, the whole entire town was out to kill me. That's where I took my self-defense classes, got my first gun, and was escorted by the police to work each and every day. So yeah, that's a good story time for later. Just let me know if you want to hear it. But in 2014, I finally got my divorce so I got separated in 2013 you have to wait a year in North Carolina before you can actually get your divorce but in 2013 when I did get my separation my dad talked me into moving back with him just because he feared for my safety considering the circumstances that I'd been in and when we finally got out of that situation my son and I moved in with my parents and my dad thought that I would be in a much better place um, to stay with him and he would feel better if he could be there to protect me and that made me feel really good because it was a terrifying experience and it was sad to just up and leave your home but you know you gotta do what you gotta do to protect you and your child so that ended up being one of the best moves I ever made even though I didn't know it at the time. The only downside in all of that is when I moved in with my parents that's when I realized how bad my dad's depression actually was. You get to see it firsthand when you live with someone, and it was absolutely a horrific experience. It was definitely life changing and heart shattering and gut wrenching, and we didn't even realize even part of it that was going on, but we did get my dad committed just because we were trying to save his life. That was the most heartbreaking phone call I ever made, and the sad part about it is they only kept him for four days and said that he was not a threat to himself or others, so in four days he was back home with us, and that just made even more tension because now he blames us for committing him and doesn't realize what's going on. So after a while, um, there was something good that came out of everything, is that I met Dean, which was there to help me through all these horrific experiences and it came just in time and he is the best father to my son that I could ever ask for so everything that happened fell into place like right when it should because I was so devastated by everything that was going on and I was also worried that when he came into my life considering all the negative things that were going on that we would scare him away but he stood by us no matter what so he has been a perfect example, like a prime example of a true, you know, relationship. And that was so hard to get used to because when you go from being um, in an abusive, terrible relationship to being treated great, which is hard to fathom, but you get used to it and it's really an amazing feeling. But one of those days that we were out, just going to get out of the house, and he was going to try to get my mind off things, so we were just going to go shopping. It was kind of dark, and me, my son, and Dean were in his truck, and we had to actually dodge a vehicle that was overturned in our lane. So we went into the grass to dodge this vehicle, and we noticed that there was someone hanging out of the bottom. Like it, he was squished between the asphalt and the truck and it was just a horrific scene so while Dean called 911 I went to assess the um, victim and that's when I found out it was my baby cousin which was more like a little brother to me because we'd grown up together so I fell to my knees and just held his hand and prayed and waited for help to come and miraculously he survived he does have some brain damage and there was a huge ordeal with this wreck, which I'm going to share with the story time, because his father was driving drunk and caused this accident and almost killed him, and then he denied that he was driving, denied that this was even his son, so this happened in August of 2013, and I did not get to testify on this case until October of last year, which is October 2017, which his dad is now in prison for six years without the chance of getting out, so... If you guys want to know that particular um, story time, just let me know because there's a lot of details I can share with you in that. 
just another crazy thing that happened because I'm always like the first on scene of something horrific and then when it's your family it's just way way more intense and it was just terrible considering especially what all I was going through at home and then the worst day of my life came on May 4th of 2014 and that's when my dad shot himself um still to this day my heart is in pieces and always will be but you know we tried to get him help and we didn't realize the extent of what was going on but you know we we tried and the thing is he survived and he could still be alive here he had some issues with the hospital and i'll always kind of blame them for what happened as he was in the hospital because he died one week later on May 11th but I'll give you guys a story time of exactly what happened here too to explain why this is such a crazy experience as well but my heart will always be shattered and I am completely changed because of this because um, I lost my hero that day and the only thing good that came out of that is that we're able to share his story and it's being able to help others. So I know he's along with us for that ride, of course. The only thing more challenging, of course, my life just keeps getting more and more absurd. But the day after my dad passed away was when my son's paranormal experiences came full force. And it was just a horrendous experience because you see this child, you know struggling with everything and that's when you realize that you can't help it because you're not able to see or witness what he's seeing or feeling and you can't explain it to him because you don't even understand it yourself so it was definitely another challenge added I'm glad that we've been able to work out um, things now where it's a lot better but at the time it was just so overwhelming of course we just had that tragedy the day before and then on top of that my child is like literally struggling hardcore with his experiences so that was a huge huge factor in my life but eventually we were talking about how crazy life was and we were like this needs to be a book and lo and behold we literally wrote a book because people don't understand what all we went through and we don't even understand it completely but we just wrote our story word for word we weren't writers by no means but we just wrote our book and left it at that we didn't know why we were so intrigued to write this book but it started circulating and people would reach out to me from all over saying this book saved their life and that was then I realized why we were so intrigued to write it and there's a reason for everything and there it was and now just think it's being written into a movie and it's going to be filmed in 2019 as a feature film and that's huge because if the story can reach even more people that's great because that's how it finds the people who need it and that was an amazing experience now that comes to when I found YouTube YouTube is something that I would have never imagined myself doing but now I can't imagine myself without it and I went like not long ago with struggles thinking I wasn't good enough nobody's gonna watch my content and then that's when you guys just always pick me up and I would get such sweet comments and that's like I can't leave this platform my small community is amazing and that's all I need so I'm so glad I stuck around and I have you guys and that I put away all my worries and insecurities and made this channel because between YouTube and my amazing job and of course you guys my soul squad my family my friends it's just I've had an amazing time and it's helped my depression and PTSD so so much and I can't explain like how good it is especially now because I got out of the old house which was what was weighing me down so much it, it was the best thing that happened to me is when I moved from that location even though I thought it was a horrific idea at the time now I'm just so glad we got away from it but that brings me to where we are now it's crazy how much life just throws things at you and no matter how hard it is you have to fight because there's a reason between everything and eventually 
just because you're going through bad chapters like I did, you just saw how many bad chapters I've had, and I'm going to keep going because... The chapters we're in now are getting much, much better. And I'm so excited to have you guys along with this journey and see what happens next. So, on to the next chapter. Thank you so, so much for taking the time to watch this. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you soon.